Hello and welcome to Speaking Scientifically. Today we're going to look at the difference between a food chain and a food web. A food chain is a map of who eats who. For example, a hawk might eat a rabbit, the rabbit might eat some grass, and the grass makes its own food using energy from the sun. Now the real lesson you're supposed to learn from a food chain is that plants are the producers and the energy from the sun that they capture gets passed onto the herbivores and then passed onto the carnivores and omnivores so that almost all life on earth is ultimately powered by the solar energy that plants capture. In the ocean, the producers are mostly these single-celled algae dudes called phytoplankton. Like plants, they produce food using solar energy. The phytoplankton are often eaten by the animal kind of plankton called zooplankton. A krill is a very famous kind of zooplankton because they get eaten by Earth's largest animals, the blue whale. So there's an ocean food chain. A blue whale eats krill, and krill get their energy from the phytoplankton, and the phytoplankton get their energy from the sun. Now a food web shows that it's a lot more complex than this. Zooplankton don't just get eaten by whales, right? Clams eat zooplankton, and little fish eat them too. So do seahorses and sea sponges, and that's just getting started. Now these creatures have multiple predators that eat them, like bigger fish and jellyfish, squids, shorebirds, and more. Now those creatures have predators too, like sea turtles and sharks and octopuses. When we draw in all these lines, we see that we have a food web, not a chain. And it tells a much more complete story of how living things depend upon each other for food. At the center of a food web, you'll have your producers. In this case, again, we have those phytoplankton. Now the big predators on the outside of the food web are also super important. What would happen if you took away the leatherback sea turtles? You might have way too many jellyfish because they weren't there to eat them. What would happen if you removed the sharks? The populations of their prey would explode and this can throw entire ecosystems out of balance. Yes, sharks can be scary, but an ocean without sharks, that's a whole lot scarier. Now the lesson from a food web is that living things are interconnected in many complex ways that we can barely comprehend and often forget. So we humans need to treat those ecosystems like our lives depend upon them. Because you know what? They do. That's gonna do it for this episode of Speaking Scientifically. If there's something else you would like me to talk about, send it to me in a comment and I might do your term next on Speaking Scientifically. Bye. Speaking Scientifically. Speaking Scientifically.